Today on Personal Injury Court. You are suing for $158,000. Her two big, ferocious dogs just came up to us and just attacked us. They were biting my arms. They bit my legs. He clamped down on my leg, Your Honor. He just started shaking it all violently. They were trespassing on my property. From a physical standpoint, this could be a death case. Absolutely. And he punctured a hole in my leg. I was blood everywhere. Th this is a nightmare. <laughs> Judge Gino Brogdon spent 10 years on the bench ruling on cases worth billions of dollars. Now he presides over some of the largest claims in TV history. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Williams versus Anderson. Ms. Williams, you are suing Ms. Anderson for injuries that you sustained when her dogs attacked you on her property. You're asking this court to award you $68,000 for your medical expenses, $90,000 for your pain and suffering, for a total award of $158,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Anderson, you believe that Ms. Williams was a trespasser. Her injuries are her fault, not yours, right? Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Tell me how you got to Ms. Anderson's property. Your Honor, I have an 11-year-old son, John. He is absolutely amazing. One day we were watching a documentary and he saw that there were other kids in our country who go hungry. And he just, he, he has such a heart of gold. He was like, Mom, I have to do something. So he decided to start a charity, an 11-year-old kid. You're and, doing something right with that boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm so proud of him. And, you know, I, I just had to help him. I felt a little weird about you know, asking people for money, but, but I decided to go ahead and help him. So, you know, we live in a great neighborhood. I figured, why don't we start right here in our neighborhood? And Miss Anderson, she's one of my neighbors. And that's how you ended up on Miss Anderson's property? Yes, Your Honor. Miss Anderson, uh, this is a dog attack. Tell me about your dogs. My dogs are very good dogs, sir. They have been um, raised from puppies. They are huskies. Okay. And they're black and white. Those are our dogs Those at beautiful this time. Beautiful dogs. Beautiful dogs, yes, sir. They're very loyal and devoted, and we love them very, very much. They're just like our kids. So I are could... they pretty good-tempered dogs? They are. They're very good and tempered. We even-tempered as well. They just... Except the day that they attacked us. Ladies, I'm glad you did that, because we're not going to do that today. You're going to talk to me today, okay? All right. Now, Miss Williams, tell me what happened. Your Honor, um... Mrs. Anderson's house was the last house that we were going to. Um, we were walking, you know, up to the front of her house. We knocked on a door, expected somebody to just open the door. And your little but... boy is with you? Yes. Okay. Yes. And out of nowhere, her two big, ferocious dogs just came up to us and just attacked us. I mean, they came full speed towards us. I mean, they, they, they were, you know, gritting their teeth, and they just started biting us. They were biting my arms. They bit my legs. So what did your little boy do? He, he, luckily, I was trying to protect him, but he ran away and he got in my car. So he wasn't but, hurt? No, well, he, he, he left me there because I was trying to protect him. Yes, ma'am. And I had one dog on one arm, the other one was on my leg, and one of them, his, his mouth was, he was, like, foaming at the mouth. He clamped down on my leg, Your Honor. He just started shaking it all violently. Oh. And he punctured a hole in my leg. I was blood everywhere. I'm really sorry this happened. <laughs> This, this is a nightmare. <laughs> this is one of my nightmares. <laughs> Miss Anderson, where were you when this happened? I was at the back of my house doing my laundry. I had the radio playing. It was pretty loud. And I went up the hall to go to the restroom. I went to the door. I opened up the door, and that's when I saw Miss Williams on my stoop with her dog, with, with my dogs, which was horrific for me because my dogs have never jumped the fence. They've never come out the gate. They've never attacked anyone. <laughs> But So I what did have, you I do got, when you heard her? I was screaming. I was yelling. I was trying to pull the dogs off of her, and then I blew my dog whistle that I had around my... To come out there, Your Honor, another neighbor had to call 911. Wait a minute. I was talking I to, talk to me. I ER. speak about this. I ended up in the ER. We're going to have order in this court. I'm not going to do this all day. Y'all talk to me. So you tried to pull your dogs off. Right. And you and said I, something about a whistle. Yes, sir. I have a dog whistle that I wear around my neck, and I blew the whistle two toots, and that brings the dog to my side immediately, and the dog came in. Why would your dogs attack someone? 
They had to have been provoked, sir. They had to have been. You know how kids are. Because they they're antagonize dogs. They'll because pick they're at them. Vicious. They That's will pull their own nails. So, did your little boy do anything to provoke these dogs? No, he did not. What was he her. doing? We were just simply walking up to the door. We had been to 10 other houses in the neighborhood with no problem. We had other houses that had dogs. They didn't attack us. They just came out of nowhere and attacked us. They were trespassing on my property. <laughs> My dogs went in protective mode of my home. Protective they were frightened. What? Talk to me. We were so sorry. Now, y'all, I'm not going to wrestle with you today. Talk to me. Your Honor, can yes, I say sir. something? Here's what I want you to do, because this is very important to you, and I respect that. I know you're in a lot of pain. <laughs> I'd like you to take your time, come over to the plasma screen. This is the front of Miss Anderson's house. Yes. And I want you to show me exactly how this happened. <laughs> Take your time. We were just walking. My son and I were walking. We came up right straight to her door. We rang the doorbell. Yes, ma'am. And all of a sudden, the dogs just came out and attacked us. Where did they come from? We have no idea. They just came right up on us. I wasn't expecting it. And before you knew it, you had dogs on you? Yes, sir. OK, you can go back to the podium. Coming up. Tell me about your injuries. I see the lacerations on your face. They bit me on my arms, my legs. My face is ruined, Your Honor. They were trespassing on my land. As you can see on my house, I have a sign that says, beware of dogs. Did you see that sign, Miss Williams? This court has consulted Dr. Samantha Brown Parks. So dogs are especially equipped for biting. They have large teeth to the side called canine teeth that actually puncture into flesh. They tend to latch on and move their head, which causes tearing. We rang the doorbell. Yes, ma'am. And all of a sudden, the dogs just came out and attacked us. They were trespassing on my property. <laughs> my dogs went in protective mode of my home. Miss Anderson, you've raised these dogs since they were puppies, right? Yes, sir. Have they ever been aggressive or tried to bite anybody? No, sir, never. And they've never, they've never jumped a fence, never went out the gate. They were trespassing on my land. As you can see on my house, I have a sign that says, beware of dogs. Did you see that sign, Miss Williams? No, Your Honor. But even if we did, beware of dog, okay, I won't go towards the fence. I wasn't even anywhere close to the fence. Beware of dog says, beware of dog. That is to keep strangers out from coming to my house. But you said trespassing, and it wasn't like they climbed over the fence and tried to get in the back of your house, no. right? No, sir. <laughs> but they're good dogs. They're very good dogs, sir. Except for this day. Well, I, you know, I take them to nursing homes. They visit my seniors After over at the this? senior club. You take they your dogs to nursing that. homes? My After dogs this. are good dogs. Your they dogs have done are that. They're vicious dogs. Your dogs are unpredictable and dangerous. Ms. Williams, you're asking this court to award you $68,000 for your medical expenses. Tell me about your injuries. I see the lacerations on your face and that your arm is bandaged. Your Honor, they bit me on my arms, oh. my legs. My face is ruined, Your Honor. Oh. I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed to even go to the store. Oh. <laughs> I get panic attacks. Yes, ma'am. I'm on medication right now, depression, because my esteem is just broken. Oh, I'm so sorry. I have all kinds of medical bills. I can't afford this stuff. Yes, ma'am. I don't know what it's going to take to fix my face. Psychologically, those scars are unrepairable to me. You're yes, ma'am. In every personal injury case, there's always this aspect of the psychological impact of an injury, especially when it's facial injuries. Now, I see that you're asking this court for $90,000 for your pain and suffering. I understand why now. I didn't mean for it to happen. I can see this pain you, but despite tears comes responsibility. If you're gonna have an animal, you gotta be responsible. <laughs> to better understand the nature of your injuries, this court has consulted Dr. Samantha Brown Parks to explain it to us. So, Sheriff Matt, will you get Dr. Samantha Brown Parks? Yes, Your Honor. Next. Your Honor, I, I have something else I'd like to... I did my own research about Ms. Anderson's dogs. Sheriff Matt, will you get the uh, documents from this way? 
This quarter is consulted an animal behavior expert. The dog comes at me and immediately he grabs an arm. They have one weapon, that's their mouth. But what they want to do is bring you down, bring you to the ground. In their mind, they're helping to neutralize the threat at that point. Part two, big ferocious dogs just attacked us. And they just started biting us. They were biting my arms. He clamped down on my leg, Your Honor. He just started shaking it all violently. To better understand the nature of your injuries, this court has consulted Dr. Samantha Brown Parks. Doctor, the kind of wounds on Miss Williams's arms, how do dogs do that much damage? So dogs are especially equipped for biting. Ooh. They have large teeth to the side called canine teeth that actually puncture into flesh. They tend to latch on and move their head, which causes tearing in addition to the puncturing. So that's why her arm is ripped up like that. Absolutely. Dogs can be quite dangerous, and it's in their genes to attack a prey. From a physical standpoint, this could be a death case. Oh. Absolutely. How are these dog bites treated? We look at the wound and see if the edges can be approximated or brought together. Oh. If they can, we'll stitch them up and hope that they repair back into their original position. Occasionally, there's so much tearing that the two edges don't come together, so they misalign. If this happens, we'll put in some loose sutures along and then let it kind of scar in or granulate in on its own. Doctor, thank you so much. You're welcome. You are Thanks relieved. We appreciate you. Ms. Anderson, do you see now the damage that your dog's created? Yes, Your Honor. This is a bad situation for Ms. Williams. Your Honor, I, I have something else I'd like to... I did my own research about Ms. Anderson's dogs, and okay. I have something. I subpoenaed their medical records. Sheriff Matt, will you get the uh, documents from Ms. Williams? Thank you, sir. Because I couldn't understand the why they just attacked us out of the blue. So I went online, and, and I read that dogs who are not neutered, especially adult dogs, they have a higher propensity, a higher chance of being aggressive. And clearly, Ms. Anderson's dogs were aggressive. You can see right there. Where it says neutered, both of them, it says no. Yes, Did sir. you know that your dogs were not neutered? Yes, sir, I do. Why didn't you neuter your dogs? Because I, we wanted to breed them. They're two purebred huskies, and I've never read anywhere where it says that your dogs will be aggressive if they're not neutered. To better understand the behavior of dogs, this court has consulted an animal behavior expert. Yes, sir. Mr. Greg Smith Aldridge. Sheriff, will you get Mr. Smith Aldridge in? Yes, Your Honor. Good day, sir. Hey, Judge, how are you? Welcome. Thanks very much. Can you tell us what prompts a dog to attack? Well, a dog can attack for a number of reasons. Most of them are rooted in fear. There's also possessive aggression. These are the most common ones. Possessive aggression being the protection of something like its property, something that it deems to be its home, uh, its human family, food, any resource that it thinks is important. There are also reasons like to establish dominance or frustration over something it can't get or get to, but those are the most common ones. I brought a video, actually, that shows what happens when somebody intrudes upon an animal's territory. As soon as the guy comes in and the dog is aware that there's an intruder there, you'll see the dog here in a second, come around and immediately <laughs> attack the guy. <laughs> this is usually what happens. There's not a lot of warning here. The dog goes right to it. He's protecting his home, protecting his property. This is most commonly what happens when a dog attacks. Now, is there a certain way that dogs attack? Well, there's not just one way, but I actually bought a video of my dog. He's trained to attack, and you'll see here, the dog comes at me, and immediately he grabs an arm. They have one weapon, that's their mouth. So they're gonna grab an appendage, whatever they can get their mouth on first. But what they wanna do is bring you down, bring you to the ground. In their mind, they're helping to neutralize the threat at that point. Sir, in this case, Ms. Williams claims, and frankly brought documents to show that Ms. Anderson's dogs were not neutered. Does that play into the dog being aggressive? It can, it certainly can. I mean, like a, a dog's testicles are the main source of testosterone. So once you take that away, you're lessening the amount of testosterone in a dog's body. It can play into it. If that dog has an aggressive nature, from uh, an early age onto maybe the age of two, and you neuter it at that point, it's not gonna make much of a difference. 
Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. You're released. All right. Thanks very much, Judge. I think I've heard what I need to hear, and I'm ready to render my decision. The verdict is in. Here, you put up evidence that Miss Anderson's dogs came out of nowhere and attacked you and your son. You were there for the right reasons, doing the right thing, and this should have turned out right for you, and it did not. Now, Miss Anderson, you raised these puppies to dogs. They never showed aggression before. You can't understand why they attacked on this occasion. You did not have the dogs neutered, but that's not necessarily a sign that your dogs will be aggressive. has ruined your honor. They were trespassing on my land. As you can see on my house, I have a sign that says, beware of dogs. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove three things. You, Miss Williams, you have to prove that Miss Anderson was wrong. That's the first thing. The second thing is that her wrong caused your harm. You have proven your harm. Here, you put up evidence that Miss Anderson's dogs came out of nowhere and attacked you and your son. Fortunately, he got away, but you did not. Being a good mama, you took all of the brunt of this attack and saved your little boy. And I know you don't feel good now, but you should feel good about that because you saved his life. Your son and you were also there on a very noble mission. I simply don't buy this stuff about a trespasser. You were there for the right reasons, doing the right thing, and this should have turned out right for you, and it did not. Because it did not, and you've got these terrible injuries, you want Ms. Anderson to pay for it because you believe it is her fault. Now, Ms. Anderson, you raised these puppies to dogs. They never showed aggression before. You can't understand why they attacked on this occasion. They got out of your fence but you still are kind of baffled that this even happened. Yes, sir. You did I not have ever... the dogs neutered, but that's not necessarily a sign that your dogs will be aggressive. The principles of land ownership apply to this case. As a landowner, you've got to make sure that you are attentive to dangers on your property. If that danger is presented by the presence of a dog, You've got to make sure that you're attentive to that dog. If that dog has bitten someone or shown aggression, you are dead wrong and you are responsible for anything else that happens. The law is a one bite rule, however forgiving. If the dog's never been aggressive before, on the first bite, you are not responsible. Oh my God. Here there is no evidence that these dogs were ever aggressive before this and despite how much it pains me, the law requires that I find against you because Miss Anderson did not have notice that the dogs would be aggressive. So I find in favor of the defendant and breaking my heart, but against you. And that is my final verdict. And this matter is adjourned. is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Cooper versus Jenkins. Mr. Cooper, you are suing Miss Jenkins for injuries that you sustained when her dog bit you at her house while you were providing a service. You've asked this court to award you $18,000 for past medicals, $12,000 for future medicals, $250,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $280,000. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Jenkins, you claim that you gave clear instructions as to what Mr. Cooper was supposed to do, and had he followed those instructions, he would have never met your dog, true? Yes, Your Honor. Let's get into the legal sauce. Now, what kind of service were you providing to Ms. Jenkins? I'm a HVAC repairman, sir. Uh, nope. Air conditioning and heating. Yes, sir. How long have you been doing that? About 10 years now. What led you to, to provide service at Ms. Jenkins' house? I worked for a company, you know, and I was out doing another service call. I just put in an air handler 
And the dispatcher gave me the work order for Mrs. Jenkins. And what were you supposed to do at her house? Uh, she just said the AC doesn't work. I, I, you know, tell you the truth, a lot of times I don't know what I'm in for. Miss Jenkins, so you had a hot house. Yes, Your Honor, I did. And you needed him to come and make it cooler. Exactly. Mm. Tell me about that day. Well, Your Honor, my air conditioner was out and it was very, very hot. There was a heat wave and it was unbearable for me and my family. So I called an air conditioner company just to see if it, they can get an air uh, person out. And they said yes, so I made the appointment for him to come out. And so just to stay cool, I went to stand by the pool until he came. So, Mr. Cooper, when you arrived at the house, what happened? Well, um, I was supposed to text the customer, and I did, and I got a text back, and they told me where to park, you know, and usually they tell me where to come in. I got a text that said, uh, go through the door on the left. And who sent that text to you? I believe it was her son. Tell me how you got injured. I pulled up into the driveway like they asked me to, and I uh, pulled on under some trees, because I didn't know how long I was going to be there, you know, and if I'm there late or whatever, I want to eat some lunch, you know, I don't want to be in a... Yes, sir. ...like under the blazing sun, so... I parked under the, the trees and I looked and he said, enter through the door on the left. So okay. I looked over to my left and there was a door. And um, you know, the front door is there too, but I haven't once been welcomed yet in the front door of somebody's house because I got tools and I got grease and you know, everything on my boots and they don't want me to walk right through their front door. Had you ever been to Miss Jenkins' house before this day? No, never, never. So what happened? I go and I start looking around and usually, um, you know, you, there's a there's an outside door, and this is just usual. And it's there's an outside door, and I walk into it. It's either a room or a small garage or a, a mud room or whatever. And then there's another entry door. Okay. And there's been so many times that I'm banging on that one door, you know, and nobody comes out. That I've just, you know, naturally since I was there for a work order, I would you now I just start going inside and I'll knock on the inside door. Okay. So I go and I shut the door. And uh, I start moving towards the other door and I hear a noise and next thing you know, I got this dog, it latches onto my arm, my tools drop. I mean, it starts, the thing was ripping. I never heard flesh rip before, but, I, but I'm sitting there, I'm pushing on the dog and it's ripping. And finally, I, I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I felt bad for the dog because I punched it in the head and it let go of my arm and then it grabbed a hold of my leg and pulled a piece of flesh off my shin. Are you kidding me? So then I kick it off my leg and then it jumps back on my arm again. I mean, it was horrible. I, I, I thought, well, this is where I'm gonna die. So this dog was mauling you. Yeah, I couldn't get it off of me. And you thought you were gonna die. I was pretty sure because I had, by that time I had blood in my eyes and I couldn't, I couldn't like see the swat or nothing. I was sure it was going from my neck. I guess was... if you went down to the floor, this could be a death case. Oh, well, <laughs> Miss Jenkins, is your dog capable of killing somebody? Not at all, Your Honor. Not at all. My dog is not vicious, Your Honor. What's He's your dog's vicious. name? My dog's name is Pancakes. Pancakes? Yes. <laughs> okay, he looks like a good guy. Oh, amazing, amazing, and you, amazing. And you raised him from the time he was a puppy? Yes, I raised him from the time he was a puppy, and I got him professionally trained. Okay. Yes. You had a trainer I work had with a him. trainer, yes, because I needed him for protection, Your and, Honor. And this is uh, Pancakes as a little that's guy? my baby. Oh, yeah, that's Pancakes. Now, uh, Mr. Cooper, that's not the dog that bit you, right? Not oh, that yeah. little puppy, it's the other one. No, that's the dog. And everybody's acting like, the, oh, the poor little dog. She said he had the thing trained. That thing is trained uh, to I kill. did have him professionally trained. You just didn't <laughs> yeah. follow instructions. No, that's I what it was. Ms. Jenkins, <laughs> yes. how did you know something had gone wrong? Okay, actually, I heard a noise from by the pool, and I was like, okay, what's going on? So I went in, and I saw Mr. Cooper bleeding all over my carpet, and I was like, okay, basically, so I attempted to call the Amalams and to get some towels to help him. He must have been bleeding a lot he for was, you to get towels. He was, ble he was bleeding, but you know what, Your Honor, I believe he pro provoked my dog, because at the end of the day, if Mr. Cooper wouldn't have walked through the wrong door, we wouldn't be in this court right now. I mean, if they say I didn't follow specific instructions, if they were specific, they would have said, go through the front door. You say he went to the wrong door. How would he know what door is the right door or the wrong door? My son texts him the instructions on which door to go in, and okay. I brought the evidence. Yes, ma'am, you've submitted that to the court. Yes, let's I, let's yes, take a I look did. at it. Could you read your son's text, Miss Jenkins? 
This is Peter, your AC technician. I'm on my way. Where should I park? You can park in the driveway. Go to the door on the left. Copy that. Be there in 20 minutes. That's what he texts back. Mr. Cooper, do you remember receiving this text? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So, Ms. Jenkins, you submitted a diagram of your home. Yes, sir. Walk me through this right door, wrong door issue. He was supposed to park in the driveway, get out of his car, go to the door on the left. My dog is secure here because we have him secure, you know, from the neighbors and everything else. Yes, ma'am. But since he didn't follow instructions, apparently he couldn't read, he parked in the wrong place. I can follow instructions. I can read, but I I'm not a mind reader, okay? I don't think you can follow instructions. Okay, but you so say, if you're not a mind reader, you left. can't read. There's two doors you on the left. You cannot read. You're such an idiot, and you, you can't been... read. I appreciate you all having a conversation, but two things have to happen. You got to talk to me, and we will not insult anyone in my courtroom. I apologize. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Cooper. Yes, sir. You say the instructions weren't clear. Come over here and tell me what you understood those instructions to tell you to do. You got it, Your Honor. Take your time. Mmm. <sighs> Now, she, when I got the text, and I mean, this is where it gets kind of weird. When I got the text, she said, he said, pull in the driveway and go through the door on the left. Right? So I pulled in, I went under the trees, and as you can see, Your Honor, there's two doors to the left. I went, I got my tools out, and I said, well, it's got to be this door. It can't be the front of the house. And the thing is, Your Honor, if I knew there was a, a dangerous, vicious dog in the house, I never would have went in there. My son gave him specific instructions on where to enter. If he but thought... Your Honor, there no, wasn't no, no. specific instructions. If he thought that the instructions wasn't clear, he should have retexted my son. Can you clarify the directions? I fully we understood the directions. No, you if just he had a vicious it. dog in the house, no, 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 you should have no. said can, something can, about it. Not... Y'all are at it again. Sorry, Your Honor. Gotta have order in the court. Miss Jenkins, pancakes have never bitten anybody before. Pancakes has never, never bitten anybody before. Now, Ms. Jenkins, you brought your son with you today? Yes, Your Honor. And his name is Mark? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Jenkins, would you stand up, please, and come to the podium? Mr. Jenkins, you sent a text on behalf of your mom. Yes, I did, Your Honor. What did you expect Mr. Cooper to do? I expected Mr. Cooper to pull to the left side of the house, to the front, and go through the front door. He did not do that. He went to the left area of the house, where she already stated where we keep the dog, Pancakes. Did it surprise you that Pancakes bit Mr. Cooper? No, he's a guard dog. If you just walk into our house unannounced, that's his job. Did you tell him you had a guard dog? No. Now, Mr. Cooper, you had no idea there was a guard dog, right? Well, and I tell you what, if I knew, I wouldn't have gone in that door. So, Mr. Cooper, tell me about your injuries. On my shin, they had to do a skin graft, um, because one time it... He, he was biting my shin, and I kicked it and just ripped the whole piece of flesh off. That's, really? that's something I'd never heard before in my life. It's Are you kidding flesh me? Ripping, you know? And then uh, on my knee, he grabbed a hold of my knee. That is a nasty, nasty wound. That's on your leg? Yeah, and you can see how deep it went. I mean, every time I would try to get the dog off of me, it would rip my skin. Oh, Miss Jenkins, you see, this was a very scary day for Mr. Cooper. You're right, Your Honor, but at the end of the day, if he would have followed the instructions that my son texted him, it wouldn't have been a scary day for him. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Thank you. You can sit down. Thank you. You've submitted $18,000 in past medical expenses and then $12,000 for future medical expenses, so your journey's not over as to these injuries. Well, no, I got physical therapy and there's still stitches in my leg right now, and my fingers right now, I can't clench them together you know, to do, like, work on my job. And, I mean, it, I don't know if it means anything or not, but I play guitar. I can't even play guitar anymore. I can't walk. I can't do my normal job. I can't even go to the bathroom at night without my cane. You know, now, this is it. This is, this is how I get around. Mr. Cooper, in order to understand the nature of your injuries, the court has consulted Dr. Samantha Brown-Parks. Sheriff, if you'll get Dr. Brown-Parks in. Yes, sir. Good day, doctor. How are you? Good, Your Honor. How are you? I'm doing well. Could you explain the nature of Mr. Cooper's injuries? Mr. Cooper has several injuries, scratches and puncture wounds to his hands, his arm, and very impressively to his knee. So the dog punctured his skin and also tore back as he was puncturing. Dogs tend to bite and tear. What's the actual mechanism of destroying the flesh? Actually, I've brought a video. Can well, I show you? So this is an attack dog training video and it shows the dog. It goes 
mostly for the limbs first, to bring its victim to the ground. Okay. So as it's pulling it down, it injects its canine teeth into the flesh and then does a back and forth motion with its neck to actually tear the skin loose. So what's the future look like for him? Um, it would not be unusual for him to have multiple revisits for scar revision. Doctor, thank you. You're welcome. You're a release. We appreciate you. Ms. Jenkins, you, you don't seem like you take any blame for this. At the end of the day, it was his fault because he well, shouldn't wasn't... have walked through the wrong door. Well, I want to been... understand this. Did you, your son, or anyone tell him that Pancakes the guard dog was there on your property? Your Honor, can I show you something? Uh, you brought uh, something. Yeah. Sure, Matt, will you, will you retrieve that? It's a work order, Your Honor. Okay. And I, I mean, I'm kind of... <sighs> Miss Jenkins, did you see this work order? Actually... That is your signature, right? Yes, it is. Is it fair for him to assume, looking at this work order, that there is not a dog on your premises? I didn't check the box about a dog because a lot of times when you do, sometimes they don't send service people out. Sometimes because of the dog. So I didn't do. So like, yeah, they're eating by They're kind of worried but about this very don't. thing, though. But right? at the end of the day, Your Honor, he went through the wrong door. I don't understand why he couldn't follow instructions. I know that you walked through the side door and you were mauled by this dog. Yes, sir. But you got to acknowledge that had you walked through the front door, you probably wouldn't have met me today. No, I wouldn't have. And if I knew there was a dog on the premises, I wouldn't have walked in any door. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Mr. Cooper, must prove three things. You must prove that the defendant, Ms. Jenkins, did something wrong. That's the first thing. The second thing you must prove is that her wrong caused the third thing, your injuries. So it's like a three-legged stool. Here, you put up evidence that Miss Jenkins had a vicious guard dog sequestered in a room. You didn't know the dog was there, and you also weren't clear about which door to go in. You went to the door to your left as you parked, and you now are requesting this court to award you a lot of money for your injuries and your future. Yes, sir. Miss Jenkins, you all acted responsibly. Isolating pancakes had Mr. Cooper come to the right door this never would have happened. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. In fact, Pancakes has never bitten anyone before. The law recognizes something called the one bite rule. That is, believe it or not, your dog does get one bite. After that, you as the dog owner are on notice that he can bite someone and you would be liable if Pancakes had a history of snapping at or being aggressive. But that does not let you off the hook because you have a special dog. You have a dog in that vicious category and it holds you strictly responsible when your dog hurts somebody. But in addition to that, your directions simply were not clear. I think it was responsible to give directions, but left depends on where you park. And in that regard, I find you responsible for Mr. Cooper's injuries. Mr. Cooper, I'm going to award you $18,000 for your past medical expenses, $12,000 for your future medical expenses, and $250,000 for your pain and suffering. I find in your favor, in the amount of $280,000 and against Ms. Jenkins, that is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. Thank you, Ryan. Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Gary Martin Hayes has to say. In many situations, owners will not be held liable if their dog bites someone trespassing on their property. But the rules change when someone is invited onto a property, either for social reasons or for a business purpose. Here, Mr. Cooper was called to fix the air conditioning and the defendant failed to warn him about the dog. The plaintiff was hurt as a result and proved that Ms. Jenkins' wrong caused his harm.